Welcome to WDSU's presentation of the All-State Sugar Bowl New Year's Eve Parade, live from the French Quarter. An annual celebration returns after taking a year off because of the pandemic. Good afternoon, I'm Fletcher Mackle. And I'm Randy Russo. For the next hour, we will be bringing you the sixth annual All-State Sugar Bowl New Year's Eve Parade. And I'm Aubrey Killian, live in the French Quarter. Take a look at these crowds. A lot of people excited. I'm going to take you straight to the parade route. That's coming up. All right, Aubrey, thank you very much. We'll check back in with you in just a few minutes with all the excitement and anticipation of Baylor and Ole Miss, the big showdown in the Dome. But first, we want to take a look back at Sugar Bowls from years past. Yeah, if you didn't know this, it is the second oldest bowl game in the country and one of six games played on or around New Year's Day. Lots of rich history here, but really what makes the Sugar Bowl so sweet? It's played right in our own backyard. The origins of the Sugar Bowl goes back to the time when uh, when, when sugar and sugar cane was a, a, a major aspect of the, the economy. And so that bowl of sugar just became an iconic aspect of, of our brand. You can see the Sugar Bowl's first trophy at the historic New Orleans collection in the French Quarter, where all of the game's historic memorabilia is housed. It's an 1825 British wine cooler, which was donated to the Sugar Bowl Committee in 1934 as the trophy for the winner of the game. The Sugar Bowl started out of necessity, beginning in 1935 in the throes of the Depression. The Sugar Bowl began at a time where the civic leaders around the city uh, were looking to create economic development activity in the city during a time that was otherwise relatively dormant. The Sugar Bowl was once called the Midwinter Sports Association, and it was formed by a group of citizens in New Orleans who felt like they could put a bowl together similar in vain to what the Rose Bowl did to bring two great teams to New Orleans uh, at the end of the college football season and have a great time. The association was able to fill Tulane Stadium at the time, a 30,000 seat facility uptown that was constructed on the site of an old sugar plantation. And in the first game, the Tulane Green Wave defeated the Temple Owls 20 to 14. From that successful debut, the Sugar Bowl was able to expand the stadium to accommodate more than 80,000 fans, expanding to bigger games and eventually bigger things for the city, like the New Orleans Saints. The Sugar Bowl also wired the city into national TV broadcast, helping what has become the lifeblood of our economy, tourism. When the fans come to New Orleans, the hotels are full, the restaurants are full, the, the French Quarter is full, there's economic activity, that $2.5 billion over the last decade, that's real economic impact to the region. Yeah, the Sugar Bowl, again, one of our city's great events, a New Year Six Bowl game. Last year, we didn't get to do this because of the pandemic, only 3,500 fans allowed in the Superdome. Safely, everyone this year can hopefully have a good time. We're obviously still dealing with the pandemic, but beautiful weather, a lot of great fans from Ole Miss and Baylor. And right now we are taking a look at these at the Shriners Dune Buggy Unit in this awesome event. Yeah, this group is always a mainstay at many of our parades really across the New Orleans area in Southeast Louisiana. You see them in Mardi Gras parades. You see them on the parades on the North Shore. So we love to see their presence here in the French Quarter. And again, what makes this specific parade so unique? We haven't got to those large floats yet, but for those of you who are watching, maybe not really uh, from the New Orleans area, we don't really have parades like this that go through the French Quarter. They're typically along that uptown parade route or in mid city when you're talking about those large uh, super floats that you're going to see. So that's what makes this parade even more special. The fact that it's going to pass across icons like uh, Jack's Brewery, also the U.S. Mint, even Jackson Square. So really cool to see. Yeah, and here are the Farhad Grotto clowns, another staple in so many parades in our area in Orleans Parish, in Jefferson Parish. Also, I should add, some tremendous camera work <laughs> on the WDSU jib just now, taking a live look inside the clown van, if you will. And you just referenced it, Randy. That's what I love is that so many people come into New Orleans and they want to experience Mardi Gras, Carnival, get a taste 
of what our city has to offer. And this is such a great event for that. Fans from Waco, Texas, from parts of Mississippi that may not get to come in for Carnival are here for this big game and they get to experience it. Not only what Carnival is all about, a taste of Carnival, but doing it in the French Quarter is so unique. And you're seeing the Baylor flag, the Ole Miss flag, they're flying with the Urban Cowboys, local equestrians, horse lovers who also make appearances in many of our carnival parades, also crew of Boo, crew of Jingle. Uh, the horses are so friendly. Back to uh, Farha Grado though that just passed. Um, a lot of these organizations do a lot of goodwill for our area too, so a lot of community support. They uh, help to support cerebral palsy. Um, they're also helping many of our local hospitals, which Children's Hospital, by the way, is going to be featured in this parade today. So um, a lot of these people giving back to many of our healthcare heroes and things of that nature as we're continuing to endure this pandemic. Yeah, and again, the parade is just getting started. Yes. We've got the bands, Ole Miss, Baylor, we've got the floats. So while we wait for them, and while you look at some beautiful shots of the French Quarter, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back. Well, welcome back to our special presentation of the Sugar Bowl Parade on this New Year's Eve. The sixth annual Sugar Bowl taking place tomorrow. Baylor Ole Miss, lots of fans on that parade route right now in the French Quarter, getting ready to hear the sounds of the Ole Miss band. Yeah, you're right. You can see them getting ready to march right at us down North Peters, right by the Jack's Brewery. This is the Ole Miss band. This is the second time since 1971 that Ole Miss has been in this game. Ole Miss had not played in the Sugar Bowl since Archie Manning in the early 1970s. Wow. They were here in 2015. It was huge. They are back this year. There is a ton of Ole Miss alumni in and around Southeast Louisiana going all the way to the Gulf Coast. So it is great to have the Ole Miss Rebels here. And as you can see, they are approaching our gym camera right now. Yeah, they're known as the Pride of the South, organized in 1928, performing at football games, of course, many bowl games, like you mentioned. Let's uh, take a listen here as they begin to perform for our cameras and we get to uh, see some of their marching groups as well. Yeah. 
or we'll just watch them as they march by and look awesome in their red and blue uniforms. They're saving the mega performance <laughs> for the Baylor Bears on Saturday night in the Superdome. Again, the 88 Sugar Bowl. It looks like they're coming to a to a stop right now. Just a little play-by-play -play here since I. But they're so. And they're actually go. looking like they're playing for the fans there. You can see so many fans. We were waiting to hear from them. I saw a lot of Old Miss fans today. I don't know about you, Fletcher, as we were driving down St. Charles Avenue. A lot of people here for this game to support their team. I also saw some folks from Baylor, too, so definitely both. All right, now here we go. The pride of the South, the Old Miss Rebels marching band. So let's listen in. you want to Ole Miss. I mean, not only were they playing for us, but they also sang for us. Maybe the Ole Miss band and choir and even some dancing action. I, I so wish. That was fantastic. <laughs> Again, the, the jib camera in the French Quarter looks awesome. Awesome job by the Ole Miss marching band. Two fantastic songs. I wish we had a camera on Randy Russo because <laughs> no. she was Ugh. feeling it. I can tell you right now, yep. doing some desk dancing here. Somebody <laughs> that I, I know. That's why I do it whenever you can't see me. <laughs> desk dancing. Someone that I know enjoyed that thoroughly is the third member of our team, reporter <laughs> Aubrey Killian, because he is a proud graduate of Ole Miss, a former Ole Miss cheerleader. Aubrey, how is it out there? And tell us, did you enjoy that just now? Yeah, I'm sure he certainly did. We're gonna check in with Aubrey in just a second, but you know, Ole Miss, all these, all these students here, I mean, while they're so talented in their craft, being able to play so many instruments, I mean, you've got folks who are studying pre-med, criminal justice, engineering, so going on to do amazing things. And as you mentioned, our own Aubrey Killian went there studying mass communications, journalism, joining our team here at WDSU. So all of these young men and women going on to doing some great things in our community, not just their uh, talents that they're providing, for us today but they've been doing a great job you gotta love when they actually play and, and have fun on a parade route because that's what you do here in New Orleans right you have fun you're on the parade route you enjoy yourself and, and that's what we're seeing this uh, this afternoon yeah and I believe now we are ready to go to Aubrey Killian live in the French Quarter Aubrey take it away Hey Fletcher, so the energy out here, it is absolutely incredible. You mentioned that I actually went to Ole Miss. The cheerle cheerleaders are coming any moment now. Barry Kern, my friend joining us live, tell me what is going through your heart when you see this back here in New Orleans? It's great to be having parades again. Uh, you know, this is the moment I think we've all been waiting for. And um, obviously this is a great opening to, to Carnival and Mardi Gras, which start next Thursday, January 6th is King's Day. Talk about the preparation that goes into this. I mean, this is a major event that takes so much dedication and hard work. Well, you know, the Sugar Bowl does such a great job putting on this football game and all the things they do throughout the year. And this parade is just one more part of it. So we work year round. 
with the Sugar Bowl Committee, with you guys at WDSU, with our sponsors to put together the best parade that we can. And it's something that all these people that come to New Orleans, this is something they don't get in other cities. Uh, they may get a, they might get a Rose Bowl parade, but they're sitting down in a chair watching television, you know, watching it. This is actually, you become part of the parade. You know, this is Mardi Gras. It, it, absolutely, and it's funny to see, or kind of amazing to see, you can see uh, the, the, the Smoky Mary. We have not seen that flow in 18 so long. months since this has been in Orpheus, you know, Harry County's Orpheus parade. Uh, it's, it's really an incredible, incredible to see this thing on the streets and just getting ready for what's going to be an incredible carnival. I mean, the city is just on fire right now. It's just awesome. And you can see the Ole Miss cheerleaders. That actually, I was not one of those. I did not get to the, uh, I was not cheering at the time the Sugar Bowl when it, when it was in New Orleans. They looked like they, they, they stacked it up, too. But it's a, you know, it's a great group of people and, and, a, and a great energy. Talk about the energy in the city. I, I spoke with tourism leaders, Sugar Bowl. It's a $200 million economic impact. Well, so talking to my friend, everybody in our, in our industry, this is the biggest weekend, the biggest week really for New Orleans in the last 18 months. So this is super important to the city. It's getting us ready for what hopefully will be Carnival, Mardi Gras Day, and the Jazz Fest, and doing all the festivals and events, the things that New Orleans does best. I mean, this is our business, doing this right here. Absolutely. All right, Barry, well, we appreciate your hard work. Thank you so much. Thank you. So again, guys, a lot of energy out here. People very excited. I'll keep you posted in just a little bit, guys. Back to you. Aubrey, thank you very much. By the end of this parade, Randy and I have been talking. I know Aubrey can still hear us. He's a former Ole Miss cheerleader. He loves Carnival. When I tell you that no one embraces the spirit of Carnival more than Aubrey Killian, his mother is part of a marching group, so is his sister. That we will see shortly. That's true. He rides in Endymion. By the end of this parade, <laughs> I want to see if we can have Aubrey Killian doing his famed cartwheels on that stage before it's all said and done because I know when he does that, he is at a new level of excitement. <laughs> Cartwheel or a round off. I'll take either <laughs> or. I'll break Killian there for us. But again, uh, you got to see the Ole Miss Rebel cheerleaders, also the uh, the Baylor cheerleaders there on the float, the Baylor Bears. These teams work so hard, just as those football teams work. These bands, these spirit groups, um, they work year round as well to make sure that you know they are putting on the show and exciting the crowd, just like what we're seeing out there today. So of course we love to see them included. And nothing more fitting than being on the Smoky Mary float. I know that you know we kind of talked about it, but it has been so long since we've seen it on the street. It's one of the iconic signature floats of Orpheus that we see during carnival season. So love to see it back in commission. And look, you and I are both from this city. We know how much carnival and the spirit of this city means. It almost makes me emotional looking at what we're looking at right now because we haven't seen it in so long. Right. We didn't have any Mardi Gras, any Sugar Bowl parade, any St. Patrick's Day parades last year. They just had a, a wonderful shot from the jib looking at the crowd. I understand we all still have to be safe, yes. that we are definitely dealing with serious conditions when it comes to the coronavirus right now. But nonetheless, it does warm your heart as somebody like you who's from here to see this, knowing that maybe we are going to be okay and get through this. As the, as the Baylor band starts to get to us, because we are going to listen to them. So I talk a lot. I'll, I'll stop talking in a second when they start playing and, and, and make you know, sure. On, on that note, as, as we're waiting for them to perform for us, um, one of the things that Barry Kern and Kern Studios, Mardi Gras World, all of them were saying is that this is another dress rehearsal for Carnival to make sure that we can put that on safely and to make sure that people can gather in revelry and in, in partnership with one another on the street. So let's listen in to Baylor right now as they're, you know, marching through. They're chanting, cheering, right here on the streets of the French Quarter, which we, we love to hear. They look like they're about to get ready to perform for us, getting into position there. No, a little spin, a little spin <laughs> action. And I will say this before we listen to them, this is Baylor's second time here in three years. Baylor had not been to the Sugar Bowl 
for decades, and I mean, my, my numbers may be off, I want to say something like 1957, and then they came two years ago, and they were fantastic. Their head coach, Matt Rule, now with the Carolina Panthers, their fans came from Texas and just ate up our culture. They are back now for the second time in three years, the champions of the Big 12, and it looks like, as Randy said, yeah. the band is getting tuned up and ready to give us an amazing performance. Yeah, the Golden Wave Band now facing the crowd, getting ready to toot those horns. And I love how excited they are too, by the way. I mean, you can tell how pumped up they are as well. Extra, extra kudos to the guy that just found the jib camera and pointed <laughs> at it. He's like, yes. Hi, right. Mom! He's like, hi, Mom, hi, Dad. Yeah, he saw the camera. If anybody watching right now in Texas saw him, <laughs> your son is a star. Thank you for giving us that little move, and here we go. They're not just playing, they are dancing, they are jamming out, they are feeling the spirit of New Orleans this afternoon as, you know, it's a it's a celebration. This is really a great way to kind of end 2021, ushering in 2022, seeing the crowds, seeing the talent that's performing for us this afternoon on the streets of the French Quarter, so couldn't be more fitting. It's true. I wonder if they're going to do an encore. Are they just playing and marching off? I, I, I talk so much, I don't know if I should be quiet. Oh, here they go, okay. So thank you, <laughs> Golden Band from Baylor. That was fantastic. We heard the Ole Miss Band, we've heard the Baylor Band, and we are just getting started. We're only 20 minutes in to this parade. It's a beautiful day in the French Quarter. It feels like normalcy, if you will. Again, we do want to urge people, be careful, stay safe, mask up, get vaccinated. Protect yourselves because, again, what we're dealing with right now, especially in our area, is definitely very, very serious. But just to take you away from it for a little while, knowing that we have big events happening as we hopefully get through the Omicron variant, this is what we do and do so well here in New Orleans. As you heard Barry Kern say, this is the biggest tourism event in our city since COVID started, and, and that's the lifeblood of our economy. So hopefully Mardi Gras happens, everything goes off smoothly, and we can start getting back to our way of life. And it's really, again, the dress rehearsal for that. I know we looked at the uh, crew of Boo Parade. We had Jingle on the Boulevard, a few of those other things to kind of help us out with that. But uh, right now you're looking at the Feed Your Soul float. This is from the Louisiana Office of Tourism. That night might sound a little bit familiar because there's going to be another Feed Your Soul float featured in the Rose Parade on New Year's Day. But this is the original. <laughs> we are getting the numero uno one here. Uh, but again, this is from the Louisiana Office of Tourism. We 
We love what they're trying to do for our state right now. Speaking of bringing people back to New Orleans in the middle of this pandemic, trying to get our lifeblood back on track. And you can see the crawfish there on the back. There's some sights and features of uh, Louisiana on that specific float. So uh, the newer one that's going to be featured tomorrow in the Rose Parade. That one was actually the celebration gator that we saw here on WDSU during the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. They kind of revamped that. They added a whole bunch of like flowers and just a similar uh, imagery to it. And that's going to be in the Rose Parade on New Year's Day. Yeah, Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser has been on a crusade to bring yes. tourism back to our state. He was in New York for the Thanksgiving parade, like you said, with a float. They're in California right now because the Rose Bowl parade is carried nationally. The Lieutenant Governor's office handles tourism, so he has been someone who has been a champion of bringing it back. And right now we are looking at the Archbishop Shaw High School Band from the West Bank. Sharif Aishak, our colleague yes, here at WDSU. Alma mater. A proud graduate of Shaw High School. Fly, Eagles, fly. Let's listen to them for one second as we watch the cheerleaders dance. Listen to the band play. proud mom and dads at home because you know you see these young men and young women starting off in the high school bands and eventually who knows you could be making it to perform with the old Miss Rebels or even you know the LSU Fighting Tigers you know golden band from Tigerland so so much talent coming out of Louisiana when it comes to our young musicians yeah and again we do have a lot of local bands in this parade this was always a traditional the group we're looking at right now is actually a group from Ohio I believe it's the lucid dance company they are from Ohio. In years past, the Sugar Bowl did a great job of bringing in regional high schools and even from as far away as places like Ohio and Wisconsin and Michigan to experience our culture. Because of COVID, we've got a lot more local flavor besides the two schools. That's why we saw Shaw. We're going to see De La Salle. We're going to see Salmon High School from the North Shore. Uh, a lot of local flavor. And look, this is like a great warm up. This is like the appetizer before Carnival. And I mean that in a good way for the Sugar Bowl. Sometimes the appetizer is the best part of the meal. And, and this is fantastic so far to get everybody ready. And I just referenced Salmon High School from Slidell, Louisiana. Here they come marching right at us. All right, everyone, you are watching the Sugar Bowl New Year's Eve Parade Live right here on WGSU. That is the Salmon High School Marching Band. Stay with us. We'll be right back.